Nice. Okay, so I'm Barbie Van Horn, Finding Fine Chocolate, and here we have a Dick Taylor chocolate with a beard. Oh my gosh, I just noticed the beard. Was that November? It's winter time. Ah. <laughs> Super close up, large. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is it really that cold in California? Uh, this morning it was, yeah. We're getting there. It, it, we've had a nice kind of long uh, fall or extended summer, maybe you could call it, but it, it's starting to get cold. Okay. What's cold to you? Oh, uh, maybe low 50s. Low 50s, okay. But the summertime's only the high 50s, so it really does <laughs> get cold all the time. Yeah, well, it was, it was high 50s in my house this morning, inside the house. <laughs> okay, so other than you two, we have Renee Fabre, we've got Tammy Eminent, and Terry Bozeman with us. And so... Let's start off by finding out what do you guys have planned for the holiday season? Is there anything um, you're you're talking about, you're making that's new or different for holiday, or is it the same stuff, just more stuff out the door? Um, yeah, it's we do have some uh, holiday things that we're doing. Um, we are selling what we call our inclusion collection. So it's our three inclusion bars. We have a, a Madagascar with black fig. We have our uh, Belize with a little bit of uh, caramelized co shredded coconut that we caramelize with uh, maple syrup and a little bit of sea salt. And then we do our Dominican with Florida cell. So they're all bundled together. And uh, so that's one option that we're doing. That's on the website. And we're also doing what we call a single origin collection, which is all four of our single origin bars for somebody that really wants to taste the terroir differences of the beans. So it's got our 76% from Ecuador, our 72 from Madagascar, our 72 from Belize. And uh, as well as our 74 from the Dominican Republic. Okay, so those are number one, beautifully packaged. Absolutely love those. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And but I have a question for you. You've got a 72 percent, a 74 percent, a 76 percent, and those are pretty precise, but they're right next to each other. How do you decide exactly how much sugar to put in? Is it just a taste test? Do you actually taste on percent by percent? Um. As you, yeah, as you sometimes we do do a bit of that um, because well, a couple things because we we make our chocolate with just uh, the cacao and the cane sugar so there's just two ingredients we only have a finite amount of cocoa butter to work with so if we add too much sugar you know so if we're going to make something like below 70 potentially we can run into viscosity problems um, and then of course when you get too dark you start to lose uh, kind of the general public's taste for chocolate. Uh, so we kind of hover around there. Um, our Ecuador, we make it 76%, and part of that is because of the viscosity. It's a, we've got a very low cocoa butter percentage, and uh, so we tried it at 70%, and we almost couldn't even mold it. It was so thick. Uh, so anyway, yeah, those are the, some of the things that we play around with, but also it is it has to do with flavor, mm -hmm. and obviously you want to add the, the least amount of sugar as possible because we're trying to highlight the flavor of the beans. Uh, but we still want it to be palatable, and, and you know, and have a have something that still is sweet-ish. We, you know, we like our sweet chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes their sweet chocolate. Yeah. So, um, you guys have joined us. Feel free to jump in with any questions at any time. Um, let us know what your your thoughts are on that. Um, so, you you play with the viscosity. You play with the flavor. How do you decide on your inclusions and have you, so that's number one question. Number two question, I know that the figs were challenging. <laughs> yes. Are uh, they still challenging? Is that is that bar still on the <laughs> chopping block as far as? Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully we have, a, we have a new chopper coming from Texas. That's actually an old chopper, this uh, buffalo chopper. So we have high expectations for this mechanized <laughs> way of chopping the fig. But it should be here any moment. And uh, we have great anticipation for that fix, because otherwise, yeah, we hand chop every one of those figs we handle and uh, slice and dice and then dry and then slice again, just wow. to spread them in the back of that bar. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. I have one of their bars, and wow. it's the fig bar, but you can see all those figs that are right there in the back of the bar. It's yeah, cool. incredible yes. amount of figs. So yeah, it's nice. a it's a great bar. I mean, I I think you know the the fig bar sprung out of predominantly my love uh, for wow. figs. 
And also, um, we do around the holidays. They're not on the website, but if somebody was interested, they could shoot us an email. We do um, where we, we take figs and we infuse them with bourbon, mm. and then we dip the figs in chocolate. And uh, so, if if that interests anybody, yes. you can send us a direct, a yes. direct email, and uh, we can get yes. some of bourbon figs out to you. <laughs> <laughs> so direct emails to you guys yeah. the big yeah. <laughs> right okay. yeah that's the best way you know it's hard to uh, since we you know we do lots of kind of local holiday events and so we like to try to do things uh, you know for our local fans and um, the, those figs have been very popular. It's a little difficult to know to judge quantity you know because they are somewhat perishable so that's why they're not on the website it, it's hard to you know, be able to keep a certain stock in hand. But if somebody called and they had an order, then we would we would make them to order and they'd be fresh and delicious. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow, that sounds delicious. <laughs> so, what else do you have on the uh, on the agenda? Anything coming up in 2013? Um, 14. Oh yeah, 2014. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we we do. Uh, there will be some interesting things. We certainly have. Uh, Downstairs, we've got a, a pile of real interesting samples from lots of different origins, and uh, we w we're just dying to, you know, run them through our evaluation process. We just don't have the time right now. Um, we're also looking at uh, some machinery to purchase that's really, I think, going to um, produce a lot better chocolate. So all of those things are really in the works, and uh, just trying to keep up with demand, really. <laughs> So how much does demand increase this time of year? Oh man, is it du double? Uh, what do we figure? It's yeah, it's hard to tell. It's it's a lot. I mean, it's right now it's almost everything we're making. You know, we we don't have we're running machines literally twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, and there's wow. and it, it's still really not enough. So, wow. um, and I know that sounds impressive. Do you but really sleep? Truth, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, um, but it just—I think it speaks to you know being a batch uh, style small batch maker. We we really do have a very limited um, output, and this last year, year and a half, we've really been focusing on improving some of the quality issues that we felt like we had, which um, conversely affected our productivity. So we're actually we've taken some significant steps that have slowed our productivity. Uh, but it's really increased our quality. So, um, so I mean, in a way, we're, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily, we're kind of making less than we ever have. <laughs> um, but it's better than it's ever been. Uh, and, and then this year with the machinery that we're looking at purchasing, it'll help us to maintain the same level of quality but uh, increase our production. So. Great. Great. I have a question. Sure. Um, I, I've been hearing reports and news articles that uh, cocoa beans are getting harder to find and is that increasing price or is that the case or what are you finding on that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that That is interesting and I, I think that it, we'll, we'll see how that plays out um, in the fine cocoa um, market. You know certainly when they talk about shortages typically they're talking about shortages in bulk grade cacao. So they're, they're talking about shortages um, for the stuff that like Hershey would buy or Calibo or Mars or Nestle. Um, now if there was a shortage certainly those those companies could buy up all of the fine cacao that we buy, the stuff that we pay premiums for because it's really fine flavor grade cacao. Um, so so uh, we haven't necessarily seen that happen yet on our end. That's not to say that it, it couldn't happen. Okay. Gotcha. Did that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, uh, but I mean, there we we certainly see tweets about that all the time, and we're you know we're always there, it's like the second or third year of shortages, and so we'll we'll see what happens for sure. Okay. Is a crop like uh, just crop disaster, or is it uh, bad weather? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, mean, I think all of those things can can play into it. I think also yeah. not only not only can you have you know disease, um, low productivity, you know drought, but also there's also ever increasing demand for it. Right. Yeah. So that also can lead to just there's simply not enough to keep up with what people are wanting. Yeah. Well, I can see the demand going up 
more and more. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, feel I like into that. More. <laughs> so, um, I got a question for you on your chocolate. Specifically, um, how do you pair your chocolate? Is there any favorite pairing or favorite thing that you do other than just eat the chocolate straight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Um, well, one thing we've been doing uh, this year, and, and something we also have been kind of, we we're selling around the holidays, and we're looking at possibly rolling out this next year. We're doing drinking chocolate. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so we 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 prepare it in a you know a French style, so it's with milk, mm -hmm. and there's uh, we basically mix it a ratio of two ounces of chocolate per cup of milk. So there's like a whole chocolate bar in a cup of milk, so it's very rich. Uh, we serve them in demi tasse cups, so that we've been really enjoying that this time of year. But also, we, we've done some local events. We just had an event uh, for Humboldt Beer Week where we paired uh, chocolate with beer at one of the local beer bars. And uh, it's just, it's it's phenomenal. I almost feel like chocolate goes better with beer than it does with, with wine is what, what we typically pair it with. Wow. And uh, if you can find, a, one thing that's interesting, a little side note, we, we don't put any vanilla in our chocolate, and most chocolate has vanilla. And, and vanilla can act as a flavor enhancer. But a lot of times you can find porters or the darker beers, they'll, they'll put a little bit of vanilla in them. And so if you pair a vanilla porter with a chocolate that doesn't have any vanilla, you can get really nice tertiary flavors, and uh, that can be really interesting. I tend to agree with you that beer sometimes pairs better with chocolate than wine. I find myself kind of not pairing wine and chocolate together as much as a lot of people think it should be. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that you know the wine hmm. tends to be a bit bitter. Um, in a tannic type of way, chocolate's bitter in that kind of a similar way. So they're, they're, they have similar flavor profiles to a degree. You know, you have fruity notes and things like that. Um, whereas beer is, is bitter in a different way because of the hops. And uh, it, it's just, you know, completely different flavors. And so when you, put a, when you get a good pairing going with, with, a, with a beer and, and chocolate, you get lots of tertiary notes that come out, which make, I think, both of them you know, they make the beer and the chocolate better when they're put together, if that makes sense. Yeah, for me it's the astringency of the wine and the, and the chocolate that play off each other, and it, it just kind of enhances that or, or brings that forward a little bit more, which I don't necessarily enjoy. So, right. you know, that's that's where I am. And the other thing I pair it with is, is bourbon. I think bourbon and chocolate go very well together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Particularly bourbon. Very big is in bourbon and chocolate. Yeah, I, I, I gotta try that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. I've got some bourbon. That, you know, I can soak some figs in here. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you, you can do it. I can, I can do that. Yep, temper some chocolate. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Very good. Anything you want to add? Anything um, that you're going to be doing? Any, any about your history? Anything else like that? Oh, um, best sellers. Hmm. Most fun thing you've ever done with chocolate <laughs> <laughs> that you can share. <laughs> yeah. any, 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 what was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> that you can actually share any on, secrets you on said? public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, well, D Dustin and I, you know, we're both originally we were carpenters by trade, so we, uh, you know, had done lots of furniture, lots of woodworking, uh, cabinetry, and restored some wooden boats, and so. Um, We've always kind of had a love of, of craft and finely crafted items, and, and uh, so when we got interested in making chocolate, it just seemed like a natural transition uh, to also, you know, working with our hands and working with something in a transformative way. When you, you know, we take roughs on boards and turn them into furniture, it's similar to taking raw cocoa beans and turning them into a chocolate bar. Yeah. So it's been really exciting, and and I feel like you know we're constantly learning and and things like that, and uh, always. Trying different methods of processing that. And so how did that happen? Say that again. How'd that? Happen? Sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt. How did that happen from from wood to chocolate? What was the? <laughs> how did you boom one day chocolate <laughs> instead of wood? <laughs> Some uh, a, a friend of a friend of Dustin's had sent us a you know a link to a YouTube video of you know another American maker, and. Uh, I, he, uh, the friend sent it to us because it was cinematography was really cool. We looked at it and thought, oh my gosh, that's what we need to do. And as we began to research, you know, more about it, it, it just there's there's just this wonderful um, 
kind of romantic thing that happens, you know, when you cut open a new bag of beans and you and you pour them out and you start sorting and you begin the whole process. And uh, it, it's neat. I think, you know, we've always been. Um, it had all the elements of things that we were attracted to. We love machinery. We love old machinery and. Uh, the chocolate manufacturing process has got lots of great old machinery, so we're like, oh, well, this is sweet, you know. And the, and uh, it's neat because it's a it's a product that everybody loves. It's something that uh, you know people will eat again and again. And so, uh, in theory, there's a you know continual demand for it. And so we really just you know bought some simple machinery from uh, you know Chocolate Alchemy, which is where pretty much everybody got their start. And uh, we were making chocolate in the laundry room, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How did that do with the laundry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, it was really odd at first, but uh, you know, we we were making chocolate that people were telling us was good. Looking back on it, it really was pretty terrible. But uh, you know, you you got to start somewhere. And right. We, I think something you don't really talk about much is the the craftsmanship. I've got the right. one bar here, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but their bars are just like lattice, and nice. can you see that that on the front of the bar there? Mm. These are absolutely so gorgeous. I mean, this is my screensaver on my phone. <laughs> 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 I think it's so beautiful. It's like wow, I just love that looking at that. So um, that's one thing. And then tell us about your packaging. Yeah. yeah so uh, well, right off the bat, you know, we we wanted the packaging. You know, we we we've done this whole thing on a shoestring really over the years, and and so whenever we would find like, well, we want the packaging to look a certain way, and so, uh, but we knew we couldn't afford to have it printed in the way that we wanted it. So, uh, like most people, we just bought a whole print shop and learned to uh, <laughs> print everything ourselves. <laughs> so we, we we bought uh, we bought a. Offset press. We bought a letter press and uh, some type and a line of type from a uh, from a gentleman down in in uh, Oakland and brought it all up here and got this thing set up and we started printing um, some really early stuff. Yeah, this there. was a very early wrapper, super early. So we we offset pressed the boat image and then letter pressed the logo and the bar origin and then uh, it evolved from a color print to I don't know if we have the white ones. Yeah, they're over in the other drawer. We actually will take you through the whole tour of our packaging <laughs> session. So we printed the color on the paper with a what's called a screen, and then uh, then we went to white paper, still letter pressed and offset pressed all in house. We hand wrapped every bar, and then we progressed to. Um, <laughs> We progressed to like uh, we went to an end opening envelope because we could we could fill them a little bit faster. Still, we letter press the bar origin, but the envelope was was printed uh, by the envelope manufacturer. But we weren't quite happy with the paper stock, so that was tricky. So now our third, or fourth, or fifth, or one hundredth iteration now. We try to change our packaging yearly. Is a we it's still the envelope, but it's a much heavier weight uh, linen stock. It's really beautifully printed. And we still do all the letter pressing ourselves. Mm -hmm. oh, it is. Wow. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I can I can letter oh, press awesome. sixteen hundred uh, wrappers in one hour. So it's <laughs> a lot of wow. And setting that wrapper really it. quick. Techno music comes in handy around that time. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. So if somebody wants to order some of your your bars, not necessarily your bourbon figs, but your bars, where would they go? Uh, they would go to dicktaylorchocolate.com, and we have a little store uh, there, and uh, all of our orders over $40, you get free shipping, and wow. uh, <clears throat> we're happy to get whatever you want out to you, and, and feel free to send us an email. We have um, things that aren't on our website. We do have the figs, like I said. Um, we are making some hand-rolled bourbon truffles as well as some honey caramel. We have lots of great local honey here, so we've been making caramels out of the honey. And uh, we do have uh, some drinking chocolate. So uh, for those of you that are fortunate enough to hear this hangout, you've got the inside track that only our locals have. So send us an email if you're interested in any of those things. Where are you located? We're in Arcata, California. So we're about five hours north of San Francisco, right on the coast. Okay. 
All right. Well, keep in mind this was recorded and it's going directly to YouTube, so there might be a slightly higher audience oh, or a larger fine. audience <laughs> right here. So that's fine. <laughs> so there you go. You guys will all get priority. Those that we actually have to take <laughs> out, and if we run out of stock, you guys will get yours first, and we'll tell everybody else no if we can't do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I have so enjoyed this. This was just yeah, great. This is cool, guys. A bit better. Thanks really a lot. Enjoyed. Thank you. We'll have Merry Thank Christmas. You. Have a great season. Get some sleep when you can, and uh, keep making that gorgeous chocolate. Okay. Thank really? you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Good stuff. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.